really great to see you here. And um, just to kick things off, I've actually asked um, Tanya Mitrovic, who is our head of the department and has uh, been strongly supporting all of this, which is fantastic, uh, just to uh, welcome you to the panel. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you here. Um, I would like to start by saying that you are the most important people for the future of IT in New Zealand. <laughs> you work with these young people and you have the opportunity to influence them to come and actually study uh, at the here or at the university. That's amazing. I'm sure you're aware of the shortage of IT professionals. By the time students come to universities, they already have some idea of what they want to study and very few would change that. So that's why I think you are the two most important people. Um, I'm very glad to be the head of the department in which Tim works. And he has done a lot of good stuff. Some of you probably are already familiar with that. Tim and Pondi, who is somewhere at the back, and the rest of the team. Uh, all computer science departments in New Zealand are grateful for the great work they have done. And uh, I hope you're going to have great two days here and enjoy what you're going to do and we hope to see the result of your work in a few years' time. <laughs> Have fun here. Um, just a very quick show of hands. Um, who came last year to a CS4HS? Right? So those are the people that you need to ask for help and information and things like that. And who's here for the first time? Fantastic, yeah, so it's sort of 50-50, which is very cool. Um, the purpose of this whole thing is, well, number one, to, to really help your vision for your teaching, to, to try and give you a big picture, to give you uh, an overview of what's going on, particularly with all the new standards that are coming through. Uh, and next year, the Level 3 achievement standards are being rolled out and so there's going to be a huge focus on giving you really specific ideas for teaching the level 3 standards. Um, I'm aware that some of you uh, will only just be thinking about level 1 and 2. Uh, a lot of the approach to level 3 will be helpful for that uh, and more to the point, if you notice those hands that went up for people who've been, actually no, more, more to the point, who has actually been teaching level 1 computer science or programming? And you go, oh, right, lots of people, cool. And who's been teaching level two computer science and programming, which of course was the first time this year, excellent. So take note of those people, and uh, they're, they're really good people to talk to. And in fact, the next thing, peer support, um, all we can do is sort of seed things and get a few things going, but uh, you have an amazing network of peers, and uh, this is a chance for you to meet them in person. A lot of the people here will just be names that you might have seen on the NZ mailing list or something like that, and it's a great chance to find out who they really are. Uh, and the fourth purpose is refreshment, and actually I would probably put that first because uh, it's a heck of a thing uh, being a teacher and a heck of a thing being a teacher when uh, you've got new standards being rolled out and uh, limited support from the organisations that uh, should be supporting you. And so uh, I hope that this will actually be a really fun time. And um, just on that note, uh, we really want to keep the tone positive, okay? There's lots of things uh, that we could be complaining about. And there's lots of things that we probably would like to see changed in, in Wellington and so on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which I used the word Wellington yesterday the wrong way, and it, uh, there's a Wellingtonian there who reminded me that not everything in Wellington's bad. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, but you know, just make it a really positive, fun event. Sharing lots of ideas. There are different ways of doing things. There are different programming languages that you might teach first. Welcome. Uh, yeah, great to see. If we could squeeze up a bit, maybe. Um, different ways of doing things, different languages, different systems, different online approaches. There's, you know, ways of getting kids engaged. And it will vary between schools and, and teacher backgrounds and all sorts of things like that. So I encourage lots of people to share what works for them. And feel free to, success, uh, feel free to uh, share your not-so-successful stories as well um, as, a, as a sort of guide for other teachers. Um, now, practical matters. We haven't had emergencies here for so long, I think we've just about forgotten what to do, but it's, um, it's uh, <coughs> the, the simple rule with earthquakes is, who's from Christchurch? Okay, look at them and do what they do. <laughs> if you see them exchanging money or something, it means you just take a bet on the magnitude. Uh, <laughs> if, um, if you see them getting under the desks, get under the desks. Uh, it's only 
very, very un unlikely that that would happen. Uh, and if we do need to evacuate, which would be, I mean, be pretty hard to start a fire in here as well, but if someone managed to do that, uh, we'd just go up to the car park out there and uh, if the car park's not a good place to be, then the fields across the road. Loose are uh, down on this level at the far end. There's a cafe upstairs. Um, our first big oversight is we forgot the vouchers for the coffee. So I've delegated to someone who knows much more about coffee than me. Max is in charge of the coffee vouchers. You can tell that I'm a risk taker. We've given 120 coffee vouchers to Max. Um, but uh, you, you get two each, uh, and uh, so, and of course you can barter them as well. And it's not just coffee, it's a drink. Uh, for those of you who think the cafe is not a good thing, uh, you can get a drink from the cafe during the day. We are also supplying an ordinary kind of tea and coffee in that, that morning and afternoon tea. All of the uh, morning and afternoon tea lunches are provided, catered for. Um, if you have um, allergies that happen to not be catered for, I think we've got most of them sorted, but if you happen to not do that, then if you can find something at the cafe upstairs and uh, we'll, we'll fix them up for that. Internet is available, you probably got a slip of paper with a login code. Um, if you have, apparently we found this out the hard way, so if you have a Mac it'll just work. Um, if you have a Windows machine it might work. Um, and uh, the main trick to know is if you might need to turn off your firewall when you first go on the internet and there's a wireless um, node called UC Setup. And if you go to UC Setup and turn off the virus keeper, if, if it won't do anything, go to, turn that off, go to UC Setup, and it'll tell you a whole lot of alarming things. Are you sure you want to do that? And as long as you say yes to all of them, <laughs> <laughs> then we're on your machine. No, um, you'll probably be on the internet. Um, we're going to be working in the labs upstairs a lot. Um, the main negative feedback from last year was the temperature of this room and the lack of windows. Uh, the, sort of go outside. And so uh, we've, um, but, but actually we're going to spend a lot of time doing stuff on computers uh, this year as well. So we'll be upstairs in the lab a lot. Uh, yep, it's going to be more doing, less talking. Some of you can yell that out at any point where you think I've been going on for too long. So. Uh, there was a survey at the end uh, which is very helpful for us to find out how to adjust the temperature in here, uh, but it's also incredibly useful when we send it off to Google at the end and say, it was worthwhile, can you fund it again next year? Okay. So, so be honest, but, but if you liked it, please fill out the survey and say so. Uh, and I just got the email from Google yesterday saying it's time to apply for funding for next year, so it's a good time. Um, right. Uh, we, so we had an earthquake recovery tour for those who are interested uh, yesterday. There are a few people who expressed interest and weren't able to go yesterday. If you're still interested, um, see Jack. I should introduce Jack, you probably may met him. Jack is actually organising this thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, and we'll, we'll make a list of names and work something out. Uh, it would probably be Friday after dinner and uh, we'll do a, a short tour. Uh, oh, and for those of you who missed the memo, um, basically we've got a list of interesting places uh, showing the Christchurch recovery that we can, we can take you around and show you. We're rather proud of how well Christchurch has done in the last couple of years, so we're very happy to show that off. Uh, yes, there are giveaways. Uh, some of them were in the bags that you got given, but the parity cards, those little boxes, we have got piles of them. And so if you are going to be, that's the particularly useful, uh, welcome. They're particularly useful for teaching uh, the 2.44 standard, so if you're teaching that and you think you're going to use them, again, um, just drop on the registration desk and uh, we'll get them out. <laughs> and the binary pianos, likewise, we've put a pile there, but if, if for teaching binary, that's also the 2.44 standard. If you need, um, if you think you can use lots, we have got lots, but we just didn't want to give everyone hundreds if you don't need them. And the posters that we had last year, um, we've still got some, I know lots of people have got those, the ones with the <coughs> images on, but uh, if you need those, they're up on the education level. Yeah. Right, which brings us to people. So I've introduced Jack, who has um, uh, not only uh, helped with obviously all the uh, nuts and bolts of organising this thing, but we'll find out later on. Uh, so, 
I've got a day job which involves teaching and research and running, I'm actually deputy head of this department and, and do a few other things as well. But I've been fortunate um, that Jack has been now working for me full time for the last couple of months uh, to help with a lot of the material that we're working on and we've, we've got a lot of big projects on and uh, you'll see the fruit of some of that in a while. Um, Heidi, who is at the back, yep, uh, has also been very heavily involved in developing materials. Uh, Heidi is a Canterbury student, but she happens to also be studying in Victoria. <coughs> we like to think she's from Canterbury, but, uh, but she's actually in Victoria at the moment, but that doesn't stop us uh, having to do a lot of the work for us. Um, Sima, you'll probably see around, she's helping with a lot of the organisation, but I don't think she's here at the moment. Rim is, is, is having a well-deserved sleep. Uh, you'll find out what he's done in a little while. Um, David is here. I think. Yep. Um, so David Thompson is one of the people. So one of the things we're releasing today, we'll be some of the first large group of people to use it, is a textbook for Level 3, an online interactive textbook. And uh, David has had, uh, had a big part in designing a lot of the interactive parts of it for us. Uh, we're going to be looking at your shoulders very nervously to see how it goes. We have had teachers looking at it for us and giving us feedback and students trying it and so on, but very small numbers uh, who have fixed the worst problems. Uh, today you get to try it out and, and tell us what you think. So um, people like David and Jack, Jack's main job has been to um, manage the book uh, and Heidi has written much of it. Um, a lot of you will have used Heidi's level 2 resource. How many people have used that? Just out of interest. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and, and so she's written a lot of material for us and uh, Timothy is up there as well and he's um, also helping to develop a lot of the stuff. I'll show you later on. There's actually dozens of people involved in this project. Um, Inzac Dit! Yay for Inzac Dit! They deserve a hand. Yeah. So a lot of committee members are here. I think you should stand up if you're on the committee at the moment. Right. Oh. Okay, I think there might be one or two more later, um, but uh, we'll see. Anyway. Okay, and past members of the committee are here as well. So we've got Margot, Max, and David. Oh, oh, Hello. Great. And Denise. Denise. Cool. Right, anyone else? <laughs> okay. These are people who have um, really helped to get the It's been absolutely essential. And uh, we'll find out overseas a lot of people are watching us and they've been more than what we're doing and setting up a teachers' organisation is something they learn from us and is overseas. So when you see things like CAS in the UK, uh, they got the idea from these guys who were prepared to give up a bit of time and, and make this stuff happen, so, so that's cool. Um, Peter Andre and Anthony Robbins, so uh, are my colleagues from Otago and Victoria respectively, and uh, have been, along with me, very heavily involved in the development of resources and standards and, and things like that. Ministry don't let you know who actually writes standards uh, or who map marks them or anything like that. Um, but academics tend to be very open about things, so we won't tell you which ones we've been involved with, but we have been involved in lots of stuff. We don't tell the ministry what to do, they don't seem to like people telling them what to do. But uh, but, uh, but we have been at the scene of the crime for lots of the stuff that's happened, and so uh, that, um, good people to talk to about uh, the, the big picture. But seriously, it's people like the NZAC DIT committee and your colleagues here who actually know um, how to make this stuff work in a school. Okay. Uh, now, uh, Jared is kindly going to video this. Uh, see how many venues we can make you chase around. Uh, is anyone blogging or taking notes or anything that is going to be shared? Maybe? Mm -hmm. Maybe? Oh, cool. Maybe. Maybe. There might be a blog if you're lucky. Cool. Um, the Twitter feed for this is CS4HS. CS4HS. Okay. So, it's easy to spell. Yeah. Right. Um, important matter, payments and subsidies. Uh, some of you need to pay us money for the workshops yesterday, uh, but most of you are getting a subsidy for your travel and basically once you're registered uh, later today we're going to send off a list to the IITP who are actually, well, probably can't use the word laundering, but they're, they're making all the, the payments for us. <laughs> basically, the university, you have to be 
become a preferred supplier for the university if we pay you money and you don't want to do that, it will take two months. Uh, and so they become a preferred supplier, we pay them a large chunk of money and they will pay you and that's very good of them. Uh, that's cool. <coughs> registrations, so this has been repeated next week in, in Wellington. Uh, we wanted them two times in two places to maximise the number of people. Um, the Wellington one, we, we've got very roughly 65 people here. Um, it's been going up and down a lot the last couple of days. Uh, and uh, about 118 between the two. And yep, uh, the majority of people who registered were here. So um, we I sort of need to acknowledge at this point that we've got a very mixed audience. In fact, it's going to be incredibly mixed because, of course, not only are there people who have been right through this level one and two stuff and through this before, but um, there, there are, have always been people here who have degrees in computer science and many people who have never really studied anything much to do with computer science and probably a few people here who have never programmed before either. And um, that's cool. That's, that's totally cool. But And so one of the things I really want people to be aware of is that as we're giving out our cool ideas, if you're giving out cool ideas, there'll be people in the room who will be thinking that is so easy, and there'll be other people in the room saying, I have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, and the main thing is, if you're one of those, I have no idea what you're talking about people, uh, we, we know, okay, and, and please don't feel threatened. Uh, we're just thrilled that you're here. But you're, you can ask lots of questions, and there are people around like uh, Timothy and Heidi and David and Jack and so on, who have been writing this material and kind of know the structure of what's going on and things like that and we'll be really happy to um, just, just talk to you individually about any questions you've got. There is a lot of jargon uh, and jargon can be a negative word, you know, it's just it's like, but, but really think of it as just precise terminology for some really important ideas. There are 15 main topics in the computer science level 1 to 3 uh, curriculum standards uh, and uh, one, and so each of those has got a pretty scary name, in my view, uh, but we, our goal has been to break it down into something that um, people with very little background, and in particular your students with relatively little background, can get into very quickly uh, by a very non threatening route. And so in uh, this, this book that we've written in particular, a lot of the goal has been start with, okay, you probably know how to use a computer, here's a cool activity, let's do this, by the way, it has this bizarre name. Uh, you'd better use that name in your report so that you impress the examiners, right? <laughs> okay. uh, just so you know, um, Max, your job is really important. This, these are the food requirements. Uh, we've, <laughs> we've got the vegetarian sorted out, but, but um, that entry, which is cut off, says give me coffee and no one gets hurt. So there is a lot of people said that. Um, people who have taught, this is from the registrations, um, people who taught level one this year, you know, there's been a sort of about 60 odd, uh, this is between the two, but so about two thirds of the people are here, so there's probably about 40 people who we saw their hands before, and fewer people, but still quite a few important level two standards. Uh, and obviously programming is the popular one. Um, our big goal, I guess, as computer scientists is to try and make these ones popular as well, and they are hard to fit in, but at least if you know what they are, um, that, that would be great. And of course, the, the main thing with having computer science in NCA is not so that your students come out knowing computer science and really being computer scientists, but that they know what computer science is. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and that's the big problem, is that students don't know what computer science is, and by having a taste of 15 broad topics from computer science, and those 15 are taken from an international curriculum, by the way, um, so they pretty much are a sample of the main 15, there's probably more like 19 topics in the ACM curriculum, but um, it's most of the topics in an international curriculum that any university would benchmark their teaching from. So it's like they've had a little tour of just about every course at most universities. But it's like the first lecture of every course. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's the introductory stuff. Uh, and in high school language. Um, people, what people said they're likely to teach next year, so yep, more people teaching level one and two, and a number of people who... So there's only two standards at level three, but um, the programming one's a bigger one, they combined. Uh, and so, yeah, there's, there's, well, how many people here are thinking of teaching level 3? Cool. How many people have seen those standards? Okay. Draft. 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 <laughs> From May. The final one is going up on the NDQA website tomorrow. I've got a copy of I can pass it out now. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, you haven't been told it's embargo? Uh, embargo, yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> well, in actual fact. <laughs> 
Um, academics think alike, so I've got a copy of the 344 one in the bag that you've got given as well. <laughs> okay. uh, it's got draft written on it, and it hasn't got anyone's name on it. <laughs> and it's not electronic, so it can't get out. Right. But, but it does, yeah, I'll, I'll, I've been told independently actually that it's going up tomorrow, so, so that's, that's evidence. It's not the first time we've been told it's going up tomorrow, so. Um, oh, and by the way, the, the, those of you who are in the know um, will be aware that on the NZDIT site, under the resources that we have there, um, a lot, most, of the, most of the standard information is actually there as well. It's just been put up under a different heading so that it doesn't say this is the, the draft of the standard. It says something like useful information or something like that. <laughs> okay. uh, languages that people are using these days um, Scratch, obviously, really popular. Presumably level one, because it'd be very hard. You can't teach level two a scratch, you really can be way up here, which is used a bit. Um, Python seems to have become really popular. Visual Basic obviously has been popular. JavaScript, I can see, is getting more and more popular because of the work of uh, code engines. Uh, in fact, I should introduce Michael and Michael, who. Uh, Michael Trengrove is at the back, and Michael Walmsley over here, um, who have developed code engines. Um, again, there are lots of ways of teaching. This is one way, and um, we're um, they're here to get feedback on the particular system that they've developed. It goes through level one to three, uh, and we'll also um, be looking at other ways of doing it. In fact, Anthony's going to run a session tomorrow yeah. on uh, the, the programming stuff. 80%, 70% of what we're going to do today is not programming. It's going to be the computer science stuff because programming you can't learn programming in two days. You can't, uh, and so. Um, all we, and if you don't know programming, then we'll give you guide on, guidance on how to learn it, but um, we can't teach it over these two days. Computer science, I think we can get you into most of those topics in two days. Uh, and programming is a language, you've just got to have lots of time with it and, and so on. Computer science, it will, now really important for you to know, um, we're going to be looking at about six of these 15 topics. Um, most of them are level one and two, so, and there's material out there for that. Um, the level three has six topics in it. Uh, we've actually split them up into seven, uh, and I think five of them we've got material for at the moment, and we'll touch on some of the others. Uh, each of um, yeah, each of those, of course, the, the level three standard is four credits, if I remember correctly. Uh, Okay, six credits for programming, I'm pretty sure it's four for Yeah, cool. Um, and, and they only have to do two topics for the level three computer science standard. Uh, and, the, um, and so effectively they get 20 hours on each topic. So what your students will have, well, 20 hours, um, which realistically probably, what, six hours actually learning and doing, and then 14 hours trying to get it down on paper, because um, it does, it, I, I know that your students often struggle to write reports and things, ours do too, and then they go and get jobs in industry where they struggle to write reports. Um, it's good for them to start early struggling writing reports. <laughs> so, and most learn how to do it after a while. It's not, it's not that it's that hard, you just got to think about communicating a bit and things. We might talk about that later too. Um, so, so in the end, uh, what we're going to do in two days, looking at about six or seven topics very briefly, is the equivalent of 140 hours of your student's time. Right. And we're going to do that in like 12 hours max, absolute max. So, so what's the ratio there? <laughs> I'm probably not worth thinking about. Um, if it feels like we're going 10 times faster than we cope with, that's about exactly right. Okay. <laughs> um, but realistically, I actually think you, can, um, you will be able to get your head around a lot of this stuff in a relatively short time. We are not going to go through the entire thing. We'll, we'll sort of get you into each topic, and the online book that we've got will hopefully carry you through from there. So, see how that goes. So, the rough plan for the next couple of days. Gonna, um, shortly, I'll just do a quick review of what's been going on with computer science in particular. <coughs> then we'll do 120 hours in two days. Um, this afternoon, because I've um, and, and most of it will be in the lab, working through this book. We call it a book or a guide. It's a website. It's very hard to pigeonhole what it is. Um, maybe some, in fact, we haven't got a name for it yet. So, if you've got an idea for a name, then resource. Resource. <laughs> <laughs> Unbook un was one of the words that we came up with. Okay. Um, 
But round about three this afternoon, uh, we'll continue just keeping our circulation going. We're actually going to walk over to Mr. Julius uh, and so and have some interesting speakers in, and they will be giving talks that they won't specifically talk about these level three topics, but the stuff that their companies do use those topics. Um, so, for example, one of them is computer vision, uh, how computers can see things, which you know, really fun for kids to play around with, and um, the. Uh, industry, we've got someone from Dynamic Controls where they've got wheelchairs that can actually spot obstacles and not make people go downstairs accidentally and things like that on the wheelchairs. So really cool applications of some of these things. So the, the idea with the industry talks is that when you're back with your classes, you just got in the back of your mind, oh yeah, this is actually used by people to save lives or make lives better or make video games or whatever's important to your kids. Um, then tonight, dinner, hopefully most of you are going to go to dinner. Um, just, uh, we've got a, as the, oh, the other feedback we had from last year, more beer, less wine. Uh, <laughs> we, we didn't do the less wine, but we did do the more beer. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, if it feels like this conference has run on a bit of a shoestring and Jack and I are running around in small circles, it's because we didn't hire a big conference company uh, to do this. We spent the money on beer and wine instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're delegating jobs to the teachers, like doing the copy pages. <laughs> right. Uh, tomorrow morning we'll do some more computer science and get into the programming stuff. Um, Anthony's going to lead it, but Pondy's also been very involved in that. Um, I haven't been so involved in the programming. Not such a good person to talk to about that. Well, I'd give you opinions, but that's it. Uh, and then tomorrow afternoon uh, we're going to stop and say, okay, what do you really need to know now? What, what, what questions haven't we answered? What, is there something you need to say? Uh, that you think will be really valuable to everyone and so on. So we haven't planned tomorrow afternoon uh, too, too much because we want to nap not a little bit. Okay, let's put things in perspective. 